Hello and welcome to the Football Daily Weekly. My name's Marcus and I'm joined by Lawrence and Dan. Um, we'll be discussing this weekend's action. What have we learned this weekend, gentlemen? Well, firstly, Arsenal are title contenders, Lawrence. Why not? Uh, from the beginning of the season, I, I think a lot of people were very sceptical of the way that Arsenal were playing their football. Mm-hmm. Pre-end of the transfer window, the team didn't look as confident. I think that's fair to say. And then uh, coming out of the transfer window, something changed. I don't think it was just the Ozil uh, transfer, but I think that did give the club a, a certain element of belief. Mm-hmm. And in a way, I think, speaking as an Arsenal fan, you might be able to... <laughs> You've already this. uncovered him. It gave, <laughs> it, gave, it gave Arsenal fans a bit of belief as well, that they, they were a club that could contend to get the top players. And I think, overall, that, that probably gives the club a great air. Yeah, I mean, Dan, some of the pundits are saying, well, Arsenal haven't played Manchester United or Manchester City or Chelsea. Uh, they haven't played any of the so-called big sides, but they've played Liverpool, who are going very well, and they've beaten them. Yeah, exactly. I think being Liverpool is quite the coup. Mm. Going on Sturridge and Suarez's form, like you can't keeping a clean sheet against them and keeping Suarez pretty quiet throughout the whole game. Mm. I think Sturridge, his only real chance was the one where Chesney played it against him. Luckily, it bounced back to very Chesney. Fortunate, yeah. Very fortunate indeed. <laughs> so I think broadly speaking, we're in a good position. But Lawrence asked the question, why not? We've only got one striker. We really miss Flamini when he's not there. Yeah. And goalkeeper questionable although he had a brilliant game against Liverpool so I think there are legitimate questions against Arsenal which haven't been answered yet but broadly why not I think they can uh, we'll go abroad now um, and Bayern Munich are worryingly for the rest of Europe better than they were last season I mean they've just gone uh, 36 games on beating in the Bundesliga I think that's equaled the record set by I think it was Hanover in the early 80s I mean, Lawrence, Bayern Munich, they look absolutely sensational, don't they? He did have a real job on his hands when he first came in, uh, <laughs> trying, to, trying to work out who to get rid of. Uh, you know, I, I think, and I think the, the credit probably goes to Pep Guardiola for not having to dramatically change this side mm. and tweaking where it was needed. Yeah, I mean, Guardiola was was um, was very clever because he went out of the game for a little bit. He had time. To, he went away and learnt German. He would have had time to study at the Bayern Munich side and see where he's where he's going. I mean, have they improved that much for you, Dan, or just a little bit? I don't think they've improved that much okay. I, because they were already at such a high standard. Well, and this like, is it, it. This is it. As a manager, if you could pick a team that you could go into, you'd pick Bayern Munich. Do you think, Lawrence, they'll be the first team to retain the Champions League? I think there's stronger sides in Europe. I, I, Bayern Munich at the moment. Name them. But that, that, that's not speaking about their quality. It's speaking about one night. It's speaking about you know mm-hmm. the, the Champions League being you know a cup tie as opposed to it being a league I think they are the best team in it Mm. at the end of the day like Lawrence said it's a cup competition like anything can happen over the years there are more than a few clubs that really should have retained the Champions League because Mm. they were the best team but because it's a cup competition anything can happen so Bayern Munich could have a bad night and if you have a bad night in the away leg or or in the home leg sorry of the knockout stage Mm. it can completely kill you off like when Arsenal lost 3-1 against Bayern Munich at home killed us off completely so there's nothing that could stop that happening to Bayern Munich on a one-off night but if if you're going to have smart money you'd put it on Bayern Munich for me indeed Manchester City have got goals all the way through their team they scored seven against Norwich seven individual goal scorers I mean Aguero's having a great season banging them in but all across the pitch Yaya Torre the Yaya Torre yeah, another great funny. free kick I mean what do you think of them Lawrence goals throughout the team and yet they're not top of the league they're, they're a few points behind it is early though yeah, no, it is. A, they didn't have a great start to the season, did they? Um, I, I think that in terms of the squad, they were still finding their feet. Pellegrini was still working out the way that he wanted the team to play. Um, and I think he is still working out the way that he wants his team to play. And I think maybe City struggle at different points to get their side to gel as one. I, I think it's an impressive win. Yes, it, you've got to take into the fact Sterner tests have yet to come. And I think Pellegrini is definitely... I don't think he's worked out what the best balance to the team is. I think he's still working out... Is his are his best eleven players necessarily his best eleven team? Mm. I don't think it is, and I don't think he's really found the balance to make sure everyone can work together. Something we saw at the weekend: goalkeepers can be the centre of attention. We saw that in a number of different games, uh, but before the weekend happened, actually, the, Joe Hart was at the centre of, of a lot of the media attention. Uh, he was dropped for the first time since April two thousand and ten for, for Manchester City. And was that justified? It absolutely justified. Mm. Like as a goalkeeper, you've got to live and die in performances, and his performances haven't been up to scratch. And mm. the Chelsea goal was like the culmination of 
the defenders didn't have confidence in him, the communication wasn't there, and at some point you've just got to put your foot down as a manager and say, that's not good enough. If this is one of the motivation techniques that other managers have employed dropping goalkeepers for one game or another, then it, it, yeah, I, I don't think it's such a bad thing. One game is okay, especially against a team who don't particularly threaten your goal at all. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's an excellent point. Joe Hart wants to play as much football as he, as he can. So does Hugo Lloris. Um, he took a big blow to the head, quite horribly actually, um, from Lukaku. I would suggest it accidentally um, at Goodison Park against Everton. And they were suggesting that, well, you should go off and, and Brad Friedel was getting warmed up. He didn't want to go and he stayed on the pitch for the last 10 minutes. I mean, Dan, what if, what if Everton had scored in that time? I mean, well, worse than that, once if Lloris had collapsed well, or anything, absolutely, like yeah, more seriously, I, I, found, yeah, I found that decision <laughs> incredible from AVB. Like, I think someone needs to have a word with him because that... You've got a responsibility for your players and just because a player is saying, yeah, I'm good, I'm fine, there's no way you can possibly know. And mm. fair play to Lloris for that, but from the club and the manager's perspective, you've got a duty of care for that player and he's got to come off. So many other sports have this. I mean, rugby have it, the NFL especially conscious of this in America. And so I, I think that football needs to take that line as well. Simple as that. Um, and elsewhere in the Premier League, a goalkeeper scored a goal. You love seeing a goalkeeper score and you love all the stats coming out that he's now the joint top scorer at Stoke <laughs> and he's right. scored as many as Townsend and all mm. of that stuff. It is good banter and it is it, it puts the goalkeeper back at the centre of attention and it's yeah. fun to see. Chelsea are struggling away from home this season. Only five points, I think it is, um, away that from home. They've got they've got 15, something like that, at home. Uh, Mourinho's always uh, turned his home ground into a fortress. Mm. But why are they struggling away from home? No, I think Newcastle are always going to put up a tough fight for anyone at St mm. James's Park. Like, it's very rare that you go to St James's Park and just have them roll over. I think that Chelsea's fundamental problem is they keep making mistakes down down the core parts of the field. Mm. So Louise is always ready to make a mistake. Torres up front and when Eto plays, like, they don't look like they're guaranteed to score a goal. Mm. So right down the core, I think that they, they struggle. And I think when they're making mistakes, it seems to be happening more away from home. Now, is that a psychological thing? Possibly, but I do think because they are seemingly mistakes more than anything, they should be able to resolve it. I think. Mm, we'll see how Chelsea get on uh, in the coming weeks. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for watching the, the Football Daily Weekly. Thank you to, to Lawrence and Dan for, for, for joining us. Uh, do leave your comments below uh, and let us know your opinions and views. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday to discuss the most overrated players. See you then. <laughs>